Uh, a lot of times we don't talk about four shot, but the fourth shot is a very important shot. And it's one that when, especially when playing with players that are lower, uh, tends to get them in trouble. Uh, I think one of the biggest things when it comes to the fourth shot is that there is nothing set in stone as far as what, like, what's the best shot. It is adapting to the third. But first things first, one of the biggest things about the being effective with the first fourth shot is that you want to make sure that you return your the, the return the serve and you run up to that line as fast as you can. You don't want to stop. You want to make sure that you get up there. So that way, if you can, you want to take that ball out of the air. Uh, but then if you can't, then you're going to have to make some adjustments. Nice. Most of the time, you want to hit that volley right back at the person that hit the drive. And the reason for that is simply because they might be still finishing up their stroke. If you go through the middle of the court or if you go to the person that is the partner, they are going to be looking to poach. And that is, by the way, a really good time to poach. So especially if your partner has hit a really good drive. So what you want to do is actually avoid hitting that ball right to that person that is there sitting and waiting for that shot. And that's why. The angle that the ball is coming from to me is kind of the most important thing. I'm not trying to change too much direction, especially when people are driving at you. Uh, people get a little flustered and they feel that they have to be cute in a way, try to drop shot or try to angle that ball off differently than it came from. And that's when unforced errors happen. If I continue to make errors, they're going to continue to drive. I am no, no way I'm forcing them to dink. A cross court drop shot. I, I find that that's the one that people still try to put power on that ball. And that's when they get burned. So people go, oh, I'm going to keep them back. And that's what happens. I can no longer keep them back. I no longer have control over what they do. This is the best that is going to keep me and my partner protected. Why do I want to hit that ball back cross court? There are many reasons, but one of the most important one of them is that the reason why I like to go cross court with that is because he hit a really good drop, pushed me off the court. Positioning wise, if I go back cross court, yes, I have to come back and protect middle. However, the ball is going to also travel the longest distance on the court. They are running in. They're not up yet. They're coming in. But that is going to allow us to get that time that we need. Plus, most likely, I am able to keep that ball nice and low. And that ball is probably going to have, I mean, I am putting a little bit of a slice so it will stay below the net, which then protects my partner. The last one is on a medium ball. That's the one that a lot of players have issues with. It's not a drive, but it's not a very, very good drop. So if it's a medium ball, most likely they are going to transition in. And that's when we're gonna be, uh, we gotta be aware that I don't want to invite them in. So on this one, I'm almost like, oh, come in. Now they're both, like, we are all in. I could have kept him mid-court, not necessarily all the way back, but I could have kept him mid-court and still on defense. But instead, I invited them in. Nice. Now he hit a fifth. Now they're in. Ooh, nice. And that's how you lose uh, a member of the cast. <laughs> that's <laughs> been fun.